Hello and welcome. Welcome back everybody to idea.org. This is the equivalent to the Jupiter Anima branch uh, that's awarded uh, a certificate that you earn in real life. It's the online equivalent to that. Um, today we're going to be doing user interfaces. So let's get started. Um, as part of, uh, of us use apps and websites every day, some of which we love, some of which we just aren't very good. Learn how to design really brilliant online experiences, which look great. Let's go ahead and start the badge. Okay, it's loading. Okay. What we got? Ooh, okay. Okay, so let's start. User interface, UI, design. Let's, let us talk to technology. From tablets, mobile phones, and games, consoles, to vending machines and televisions. User interfaces, UIs, are used to enable us to interact with machines and technology. In this badge, you'll learn some of the basic concepts of users of user interface UI design. Okay, press next. In this badge, you'll learn what a user interface UI design is and what kind of devices it use it. How a physical device such as games controller maps to actions on a screen. Some basic around how user interface UI design is used in software. How these elements can be brought together to create a game. Okay. Here's a selection of common systems you may be familiar with. Each one of them has the uh, at least one method of letting us interact with it. Using human interface design. Drag and drop the input devices below onto the household device. Match the ones that work the best together. Okay. So, for example, we do a monitor. Uh, okay. Oh, I see. I see. So, a controller to a console. A TV remote to a TV. A keyboard to a um, PC. And then a finger to a mouse, uh, like a phone. You've matched up the objects correctly. When thinking about user interfaces, UIs, what do you call an object that enables a human to interact with a computer? Input device or computer system? It would be an in input device. Input devices are needed to communicate with computers, whether it's using a controller or touch screen or even voice controlled. There are many ways of interacting with a computer through human interface design. In user interface UI design, we need a way to map input devices to the actions that happen on screen. Let's give it a go. Meet Fred. We can make Fred move using the controller. Let's map each of his actions to the controller buttons. Okay. Which button should we assign the jump button to? Click on the controller the buttons that you think makes the most sense. So we'll do X for the jump. Okay. Now, which button should we assign to the left action to? The left D-pad. Great. And finally, which button should we assign the right action to? There we go. Perfect. Directional arrows help steer the character left and right, while the other buttons will work for jump. Generally, we don't use directional arrows, so we can use both buttons at once. Now let's give it a go. Try pressing the buttons on the controller to make Med move, uh, Fred move. Hey, made him move. Go ahead and make him jump as well. Hey. Looks like you have the hang of it. When you're done, press the continue to carry on the badge. Okay. On the bottom left is a continue button. Great mapping. Input devices are needed to communicate with computers. We've already read that. Okay. Think about what you've just done. Why is it important that we map actions to input devices in a clear way? The user needs to intinu intuitively understand how to control this computer system. Mapping helps make the user interface more challenging. No, we need to al al allow the users to, to basically control it a lot easier. That's what we're going to do. So move on to the next level. Uh, okay, here we go. User interfaces, UI design, is also used in software to provide interactivity for users. 
GUIs are graphical user interfaces. Let's have a look at some of the most common elements used to help users navigate software. Checkboxes, radio buttons and buttons give us the elements to put together a very basic user interface UI. Here's a quiz. Okay, Let's build the user interface UI for, for a simple quiz using some user interface UI fundamentals including user, user interface UI elements affordance and pos uh, positioning okay drag and drop the correct user interface element onto the quiz we want to only allow users to choose one answer okay so this is a great question how are you going to answer it answer one we will go ahead and do um, a button no okay check boxes no I thought, I thought I'd done radio okay correct radio buttons are best for quizzes because they can only select one option a checkbox may work for a quiz which enables multiple answers but in this case we'll only allow one okay in the user interface UI and user experience UX Design. Try to u try the user experience UX design badge next. We need to give an affordance to a digital elements. Affordance is designing an element in a way that makes it intuitive for users so that they understand from the design what the functionality is. Look at these three examples of buttons. Select the button which you think implements the functionality of a button the best. Nope. Submit, submit, okay. Correct. The raise button with the language submit is an example of explicit affordance. This uses both language and physical appearance to imply the function it performs. The green colour also suggests a positive action. There are several types of affordance that you can look out, uh, look into further, including pattern, hidden, false, metaphorical, and negative affordance. An extension of affordance is a position. Position is another important of subject to think about in user interface UI and user experience UX design. Now you've selected the correct style and submit button and the radio buttons for the quiz. Place the submit button in the position you think would work best for the user to flow. We're also going to place it at the bottom one because that's where it would go. Okay. Correct. Placing the button underneath the quiz works in terms of neutral flow for the, of the document. The user answers the questions first and, makes, uh, and it makes sense. They would then click the submit button afterwards. What is the affordance in user experience UX design? The cost, so the cost of a user of using a certain user base elements. No, a situation where objects, characteristics, intuitive are enough to imply its functionality. The type of user interface elements used. Um, it would be this one. The situation where the object's characteristics are intuitive enough to simply imply its function. Yes. Next one. Okay. Now let's bring this, the user interface UI and graphical user interface UI skills you've learned together and create a basic game set around Fred. We've got some consoles to play it on, but drag and drop the most appropriate user input device onto it so that users can control Fred. Okay, so that would be a controller. Perfect, now let's set up the start screen. Okay, We've got the introduction to the game, but we need to wait for the user to start. Drag and drop the best position of the user interface UI element that you think that works. Remember explicit affordance and position. How are users going to know they should press this button? Okay, Start game. Great. Now we have a button that which is explicit affordance. So now the user can start the game. It is possible to put a button in different places, but in this case it's easy to see where the gamepad 
group pad with all the graphics are placed in the center of the screen. Below the existing text, now we can uh, need to be able to move thread. Time to map the controls the correct way. Map the left action. Map the right action. Map the jump button. Looks good. The left and right actions will work best in the direction buttons. In this most intuitive for the user, any other non-directional buttons work fine for jump. Enable users to use both buttons at once if they need to. Now it's time to use the controller you have set up and the user interface UI you've designed to try to try the game and see how those elements work together. We've also mapped your controls to both keyboard touch events. The choice of your input device is based on around your user experience, user X. Then your user interface UI. You can find out more about this user experience badge. Okay. Time to try out. And once you reach the end, uh, answer the question and uh, the badge. Okay. Here we go. Get thread without, without flying into. Okay, well, this is actually kind of hard. We have to jump. Okay. That's actually really hard, it's not as easy as it looks. There we go, got it, okay, there we go. It may have been simple level, but without the user interface elements and careful throughout performance and position, you wouldn't have been able to complete it. Great work. Can you name the type of affordance used for this green button in the final level? Um. The type of affordance, okay. Type of affordance would have been a GUI. Nope. Explicit? Yes, that's right, explicit, okay. And there we go. That was it. So that was the badge. You've learned about the devices and how they relate to different systems. You've learned about how to map a controller and how human interface devices interact with software. You've learned about graphical user interfaces and how they make software more intuitive. Use these skills as a foundation to look further into user interfaces. We'd recommend you move on to the user experience badge next. Okay, so we'll go ahead and press good work. And just like that, we complete the, complete the badge. Okay, there we go. Thank you for watching. Uh, my name's Ryan, and if you do want to see more of this, make sure to drop a like button down below, subscribe, and uh, comment the badge you want to see next. Um, uh, let's get, uh, let's get, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. My name's Ryan, and I'll see you guys in the next video.